day, speedy San Marino magicians. I'm in silence and we're on the air with more. F1 2009, it's episode number eight, which means we have reached stage eight of challenge mode. Thanks for tuning in. I guess I can't really call San Marino Magicians because technically it's the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix at Imola this coming weekend. I'm assuming it's kind of like the Eiffel Grand Prix at the Nürburgring in which there's some like you have to go through like whatever promoter or whatever local authority in order to be the, the German Grand Prix there, so they couldn't call the Eiffel Grand Prix the German Grand Prix, which was disappointing. I wish they could have called it the European Grand Prix, a throwback to when I used to watch Formula One. Well, I, I still watch Formula One. When I started watching Formula One there, that's better. <laughs> because I, I think they got, or is this when the rotation started? All right, everyone stop for a second. I gotta go. Look and see if Hockenheim's in here, because I don't think Hockenheim's in here. So, Monte Carlo, Istanbul, Nürburgring, it's in that spot where, no, this was in the rotation period between the Nürburgring and uh, Hockenheim for the German Grand Prix. Because money. The Bernie era. Well, not that it's really changed that much now, but since they're talking about moving, uh, as of recording, they're talking about building a track in some of the last remaining forest and forested area in Rio and moving the Brazilian Grand Prix from Sao Paulo to there. Yeah, they could just, if, if they're worried, they could just move the move the F1 race to where they did the uh, IndyCar race in Sa Sao Paulo, I believe. It was a good track, had some fun. I'm not just saying that because Hinch won a race there. Out of the last turn, like a boss. Anyway, here's what we got for stage eight. We got a burning lap at Budapest, okay. Then a stooge at spa franc Orchamps, Cornering at Yas Marina. Okay, for this one, remind me to turn on the racing line. Just that way we can see what it wants to... And, and for this one, Gates at Budapest. It's a Maggie or Nagy ditch sort of day. No, then we're going to Yas Marina again, but this time for Tuj. And then an Eliminator at... Oh, Silverstone. I probably made this joke the last time, didn't I? Silverstone Eliminator, because I'm thinking we could have done... Well, we've already done a Double Your Fun titled episode. So anyway, let's go Budapest, a burning lap. Again with the Renault. Mike's throwing me in the Renault. Now this was the race where... Oh, way too late. Oh, it wasn't too bad, actually. Let's look at the 100 and I realized it was the... I realized I was breaking at the 50. And this one you can break later because you're not going as fast. Right, right, right. Uh, I was going to say, yes, this was the race where Grosjean replaced, um, uh, replaced, uh, what's his face? PK. Right? Because I want to say this was where, no, nope, I'm a year late. Right, right, right. Because it was 2008 that Crashgate kicked off. Right? No, it was had to be 2009 that Crashgate kicked off. Because they still got the ING on, on the car. Right, right, right. Okay, I'll be alright. Because 2007, Fernando was at McLaren. That was going poorly. So, I'm busy talking as opposed to concentrating and driving. Yeah, 2008. 2007 was when Fernando was at McLaren, and that went badly. So, he ran back to Renault for 2008. Won back-to-back -back races at Singapore and uh, Fuji, Japan. And then... Right, right. And then... Crashgate had kicked off before they'd gotten back to Singapore. And I wanted to say it all sort of kicked off here because I'm pretty sure this was where they had replaced PK. I'm too busy doing a history lesson to pay attention to my driving. And we still get an A. Well, it matches the color of the Renault, of course. Let's, let's be honest. How many people here come for the gameplay and just come from and stick around for just whatever random shit comes out of my mouth now? Spa Franco or Champ a Tuge. Why am I getting a weird feeling about racing at Spa? What the hell was I just doing at Spa? Grid Autosport, right. <laughs> Never mind, let's do this. Because I'm doing a race in uh, Grid Autosport. Oh, we're in a Macca. As. One Lewis Hamilton 
Don't say Louise Hamilton like your uh, David Hobbs. Gonna try the long way around. Got a ticket for the long way around. Two bottle of whiskey for the way. I was doing this in uh, Formula A, which is IndyCar, in Grid Autosport. And so uh, that was a, uh, a duck down to the inside. Nope. Break the toe, unbreak the toe. So I'm thinking of my great autosport in an Indy car. Brake markers, because those things don't have the downforce or the braking force of a Formula One car. Now down to this nameless left-hander. Pretty flat in this thing, actually. I was expecting to have to let off. And down to Pujan. Keep it under wraps there. Remember, let's see Fernando Alonso history lessons. Remember the time that he had a good Q2 lap dead because the ERS didn't deploy coming out of Puhan because the car went too fast for the ERS software. In one of the strangest F1 stories I can recall. But yes, but yet also one of the most McLaren Honda stories I can recall as well. No braking markers anywhere on this lap. Now we've saved our curves for the end there, which is probably just about right when you're leading. That way you can uh, maximize your uh, time difference, because we got to stay within that time difference. We can't lose the next race by more than a minute point nine or a second point nine one seven. God, if I could have a minute of uh, gap to ha to Heike there. Poor Heike, I don't even know what he's up to anymore. Well, we're gonna have to use some curves to get away there. I don't even know what Heike's up to anymore. I was looking through the roster. There are not a lot of guys that are still in F1 in this game. And you got Lewis, you've got Kimmy, you got Seb. Fernando's coming back next year. You've got some guys in sports cars like Kaz Nakajima and Nelson, not Nelson, Nelson's in Formula E, uh, Seb Buemi, Bordes in IndyCar. Coming back for a full season with AJ Foyt next year. And then finishing out the string, or finished out the string at this point, I believe. Uh, with AJ Foyt for the final three races. So that way they could get in that uh, leader circle money. I think it's with the top 22 full time entries, get like a guaranteed million dollars from the series. And there were 23 full-time entries this season. So AJ brought back board A to try and salvage the number 14 season so it could get into the into the leader circle. So I'm trying to remember who's uh, on the outside. Who's uh, because it was as of recording like three cars at the tail end of the um, at the tail end of the of the uh, leader circle standings, the owner's entrance point standings. I think it's the 14 for Foyt, the 98 for Andretti, Herta, Kerr, Bagajanian with Marco Andretti, and the 20 of Ed Carpenter Racing. Mind you, oh, also, we won by a second, or uh, another second is in this one, so. Almost three second gap. So we'll see what that gets us on the other side of the Touge. Another one star, eh? Well, oh, hey, it's an A. It counts. A B would have been better because it would have matched the color of the silver arrow here. Hell, that red circle B would have almost looked like a... 
It would have it would have almost looked like a Vodafone logo. Not quite, but close. All right, cornering and yes, Marina. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, not for this one. Yeah, let's do it for this one. We'll do it for the next two. What I want to do is I just want to see driving aids. I want to see. Give me the racing line. Yeah, it's just on and off. Okay. Hit X just in case that doesn't save if I don't hit X. I was listening to a podcast the other day, actually. And they were talking about, about how Sony is going to try and mandate across all regions now. That X is advanced, accept, etc, etc. And circle will mean cancel, back, etc, etc. On menu systems, internationally. Because I guess, yeah, if you've played old JRPGs... Like old Final Fantasy games, like 7 I want to say for sure. And I always used to, because I started on 9 as my first Final Fantasy, I always used to switch the the button uh, button mapping in uh, Final Fantasy 7 because of this. But circle in that would be to confirm or select, and X would be your back, your cancel. You know, the inverse of what you're seeing on the screen right now, basically, right? Alright, corner at Yas Marina, we'll see if having the if having the racing line on will help me with improving my scores here. Oh, we got a brawn. Nice. It's hard to miss these things. So I turn on... So I turn on corner, or uh, driving line. And what do I not have? The problem is, is, it feels like there's multiple lines going on too, right? So turn on driving line. Hang on. Do we have it in here? Steering assist, racing line on. On! On! All right. Let's use this. See where we're going. Try and hold to this. That way we can find out where we're going. And what do I do? I'm spending so much time. I'm looking at at the green line as opposed to where I'm supposed to be doing so. Still? It's a straight, damn it. All right, when's that gonna chip over? Excellent, okay, see, it is helping. Like I assume I'm supposed to be pointing the nose on, on that green line. Awesome, okay, see, it is helping. Except I feel like I'm driving, well, driving the game as opposed to driving the car there's a subtle difference it doesn't sound like this it sounds like it would sound like this be the same thing but it, it in my head it isn't oh B well I mean you usually get a C in this right so I mean that's an improvement and I want to keep the rhythm going let's do the gates at Budapest and I want to see, this isn't so much for where I'm going. This is where, I want to see where the racing line is versus where the gates are. Because this is one of those things I've been saying the last couple of weeks is, these gates are just in the middle of the track. They aren't near something that I would consider a racing line. So let's see where this stacks up versus the actual virtual racing line that the game throws in there. So, Renault again. All right, let's see. Yeah, that racing line is just inside. That's going right through. Yeah, no, that was not near the racing line. Nor is that. So we've got our answer already. The gates are just in the middle of the track. And, uh... 
I had to slow down there because I couldn't take the line. This will be a tricky one. Woo! Ran a little wide. Okay. Well, we learned something today. Oh my god. That was villainous. I should have skipped that one. Take the three quarters of a second penalty. Busy concentrating, sorry. I'm busy concentrating on, on hitting the gates and just like I mean there's not much more I can add, right? I mean I could have added, hey Steve, use the freaking boost. I could have added that. So 34-3 on the nose. And we'll see what we end up with here. Oh, three star A. And in doing so, I've discovered your secret sumo digital slash code masters. You know, for as much crap as I give sumo digital over gates and cornering, they should have been the ones that did F1 race stars and not code masters. Because F1 race stars had potential but it didn't didn't pan out whereas like sumo digital you play some of their you know sega and sonic racing games like sega and sonic all-star racing transformed i think it is oh my god what a game it's a fantastic karting game anyway uh we've reached just past the halfway point of the video with uh four challenges down two normal and one special challenge to go so at this point, if you're this far into the video, don't forget, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new, because Wide Open Wednesday is a thing, and F1 2009 is part of the ongoing Let's Play of classic retro racing games on the channel. I think I'm going back to my roots with the next one, though. So I think we're going to throw it back in my channel history for the next Let's Play. And uh, don't forget as well, you know, we're talking a lot of racing on here, so if you want to talk more racing, comments... Heck, even the Discord, which you can find, or Twitter, or whatnot, you can find all those social media links in the description down below, along with playlists to, like, uh, Grand Prix 2, for example. I'm trying to think what else I might have had. I think some other Cody's games might be in there, in that play, in the playlist in the description, like Toka 2, and, uh, Call McRae Rally 2. Alright, on to Tooge, which is, again, your head-to-head -head race, but this time at Yas Marina. Fortunately, we were just there. Now we're rocking. Uh, okay, we are. Uh, we are Rubens, and that is Gold Jensen Button. Now, what I'm gonna do here? Sorry, we're gonna take three seconds. Turn off the racing line. Sorry to anybody that liked having that resource f there for them, but we gotta be careful here. Don't run over the back of Jensen into turn. Oh, he's run wide. He's run into the gravel. Thank you. Cody slash Sumo Digital for never updating this with Tarmac. Although, I'm sure the Hulk would say thank you, actual track builders. Like one Hermann Tilk. I believe this is a Tilk drone, isn't it? Long sweeping S's, needless chicanes, long straights into tight turns. Yeah, it seems like a Tilk track. He's having a chat with friend of the channel, Marcus12. Uh, you find him on YouTube as well, by the way. Uh, we were chatting about... Oh, God, what track was that? Or just the other day, we were chatting about a track, and he's like... Sends me... Uh, and he sends me the... Uh, how was it? Korea? Yongam? He's like, and uh, who do you think designed this? I'm like... Well, needlessly ornate, ornate um, facilities around the place and long straights into tight turns and a couple times and way too many S sections where it strings the field out. 
Can't imagine who that could possibly be. Oh, helicopter sound. It's not going to penalize me for a corner cut there, a blatant corner cut there. So, ex oh, exactly one second. So one thing, I've never read about DRS, and I don't know if they've ever had to do this because, well, I mean, how often does the gap at the detection line equal exactly one second? But is it one second or less, or is it less than one second is the DRS rule? Yes, again, not that it was a thing until, what, 2011? Get a little boost off the line. And that is easy to run deep in there. Let's see how Jensen ended up in the gravel there. Because, yeah, it was... 2009 was supposed to be Curtis that helped, was supposed to help with passing and such. And then... I want to say 2010 was F-Ducked. And then, I think 2011 was DRS to replace the F-Duct. Now, the F-Duct was this innovation that uh, McLaren had. Where they would funnel air over, like a channel of air, through the car. Like, they had some duct work, and I, I forget where the intake was. It was on the nose section somewhere. And it would uh, funnel air up behind, and they had, like, the... You know how they had the shark fins now, right? Or I guess up until recently they had the shark fins that all the way went to the rear wing, but they said they had the ducted air that would funnel through. And when the F-duct was activated, it would, it would funnel that air onto the rear wing and I guess use some aerodynamic principles to stall it out, make it effectively like no angle on the wing so there was no drag. Eliminate the down first, eliminate the drag. That was close. That was why we have DRS now, so the... To get the benefits of F-Duct, but have F1 control it. It's just under a second there, so... 1.934 is our total time for victory here. And let's see... A B. Well, I'll be a son of a. All right, five down, one to go. It's an eliminator. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. We are going. To, oh, we're driving a Maca. Number one. Oh, full grid. Let's go. We're to twenty-two this year. Ah, now you got me thinking. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go the long way around the cops. Oh! Well, oh, Force India's hit me. Man, I was really hoping I could drive a Force India today. Because, I mean, we've got Halloween coming up on Saturday, right? I renault has got some orange accents on it. Okay, I guess that works. It's not as good as, like, if we were to drive a McLaren now. Let's cut back across. Oops. I think that was Nick Yellow Helmet. Just. We're just gonna hit everyone. No penalties, that's not Tuge. Just make our way up to safety. It's gonna be a long one, because gotta eliminate the entire grid, right? So, it's a little bit of learning the track. I love bridge. That's a great corner. I'm a little disappointed that it only exists in video games now. And that the old bridge layout doesn't exist anymore. They've let it fall into disrepair, I believe. Oh, right. There we go. Ran a little wide there, through cops. Trying not to run over the back of anyone. Ah, oh, come on. 
Let's go say, is that Glock? No, red uh, T-bar, that must be truly. I passed Kaz, I passed one of the... Both of Williams's have uh, yellow T-cams? Both of... Both of Toyotas. Because I swear I just called out... One's supposed to be red and one's supposed to be yellow. It's supposed to help... It was supposed to help us identify the drivers before the... Before the, uh... Big numbers and the... And the single helmet rule. I still think... Like, even if you don't go full, like... IndyCar or NASCAR... You know, there's better ways of helping us identify the drivers... Without the numbers. Like, um... Back when... Chip Ganassi Racing ran two target cars... They would have different... They would run different front rear... Front wings, rear wings, and barge board liveries, so... One would have, like, red on front, rear, and, uh, barge boards on one car, and, uh, yeah, red on one and white on the other, right? And it's like, that's the sort of thing that, you know, you could get away with in, in Formula... You should be able to get away with in Formula 1 to help tell the cars apart. Now, as opposed to, you know, numbers or... Or yellow tape on on the uh, camera so something like this era of McLaren right one could run red front wings and one er, and rear wings and one could run silver front wings and rear wings now now you look at uh, Mercedes right one could run like the uh, Patronus Teal, and one could run silver front and rear wings and barge boards. Or maybe... You can also change up the color of the halo. And one has silver and one has teal or something like that. I mean, at least they aren't such a stickler... ...on the, uh, on the halos for Mercedes, because if you notice... Lewis has the purple accent on the halo when you're looking at it from the uh, roll hoop camera there, the T-cam. So. Little things in case you didn't notice. Now, let's go through. Stow again. Charge down to the... Oh, no, wait, there is no... That's no pit straight. <laughs> it's now, I know, but... Yeah, it's just, uh... Four more eliminations to go. Now we've got out front and we've got clean air. We've left... The rest of them in the dust. Whoever's sitting fifth is not catching up. Bar a miracle. Right, use the curves, use the curves. Because I don't know what gets... I, I'm assuming, like, just winning gets me an A. So, we'll see how many stars of an A we can get. The one advantage of having such a long... Uh, long eliminator... Is that I was able to just take it nice and easy in traffic in the first couple of uh, eliminations. Just kind of shoot up, get a few positions. And then let the rest of the race kind of come to me. As I got comfortable with the car and the track. I didn't have to rush everything. Just come to me in my own pace. And it has. Well, it will in five seconds. Two, one, don't miss this turn. There we go. Mind you, I could have missed that turn. I could have taken a wrong turn onto one of the short circuits and still been fine. Three star, Ray, that's what you like to see.
special challenge. What have we got? A head-to-head -head Catalonia with Fernando Alonso. Well, they've been keeping it thematically appropriate, the head-to-heads, because we had Alonso here. We had Kaz Nekajima at Suzuka. Phil in Sao Paulo. He didn't stay as cool as he had hoped. Slow fuel. And then, what was the first one? Head-to-head, -head, okay. Yeah, head-to-head, -head, Kaz, Nek, Jima, Suzuka. Is that the only one? Head-to-head, -head, Nürburgring, Nick Heidfeld. Okay, no, I forgot Nick. Poor Nick. And then head-to-head -head there. It's what every other one is a... Or pretty close to is a head-to-head. -head. So what, Lewis or Jensen at Silverstone here? What do you think? All right, let's go. Two laps? I just realized. This is Catalonia. This is like my least favorite circuit in the game. God damn it. <laughs> well. I'm good at the first sector and then it just falls apart progressively from there. Once we get to sector three, I should probably just save all my curves for the final sector. And just blast it out the final, <laughs> out the final turn. Break at the bridge. But don't break into the side of Fernando like I would be, like, you know, a Mercedes driver, for example. Come for the old game, stay for the snarky F1 commentary. Make this charge down to Sector 3. And this hairpin. Oh! I took the old circuit. I took the old circuit. <laughs> Did play the old circuit in Grand Prix 2. Preferred the old circuit, I think I've... Just hold it flat. How much time am I behind? Eight tenths of a second. Give me DRS. Oh, actually, you got slipstream. Retake the lead. Down into turn one. So, we've got to make sure that we get it right in the final sector. Don't overcook it into the hairpin. Broke too early there. So worried about going too fast. I've gone too slow. Oh, Fernando's had a problem. Because we've picked up a bunch of time there. Out of turn five. Onto the back straight. Break early. And at this point, it's... Everything's just set up for the passage to turn one. So I just got to keep the car on the tarmac. Between the painted lines. I mean, the game can't get too mad at me. I love it when a plan comes together. And across the line. We've beaten Fernando Alonso on his home turf, like Jeff said. Four and a Almost a half seconds. And a two star A. Eh? Not a bad day's work. So, eh, you know. Five A's and two B's. Not a bad report card. All things considered. I mean, that started life as an E last time, so. So what have we got for the next episode? We've got... Oh, I've been talking about how we haven't been to Monte Carlo. We haven't been to Monaco yet. And we're going to get there not once but twice. Ho, 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 ho. Ho. Baptism by fire. So we're going to do a burning lap around Monte Carlo. Then we're going back to Melbourne for... Melbourne for Slipstream. Oh, there's an E. I don't mean for everyone. An Eliminator at Singapore. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. 
Valencia for Gates, Touche at Monte Carlo, Burning Lap at Valencia. Next episode is going to be Streets Ahead, because we're doing street courses all day long. Let's go. Look, it's only Valencia that I really don't like in this crop, so... And that's because I just have no practice at it, so... so we have a, we don't have a cornering, though. We got two twos... No, one, one twos, two burning laps... One gates, an eliminator. Okay, huh? so we might be okay. We got some variety, though. So that'll be good. Alright. We'll do that next time! On F1 2009. But until then, I'm Unsan. Thanks very much for joining me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Share on social media. Follow on social media. The social media handle is Unsan Latonia. And that is for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. And don't forget, you can check out more F1 2009 in the playlist. It's on the screen in the description down below. And more videos in each time on the channel page. And until the next time, I'm Unsan. Thanks very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe. And we will see you next year.